question time. We have a panel here today, extremely interesting one, in the sense that Colonel Kemp and myself are surrounded by international law people. With Daniel, I spent many long hours Will I try to be in charge of the content and he the wording or the formulation and sometimes it reversed and I did the formulation and he did the content on various agreements that if you'll sum them up one day, Danny and myself, we arrived at them from different uh, points of view. I come from the intelligence perspective and he comes from the legal perspective and I'm not that certain that we are going to emerge of this examination with a great deal of examination uh, with a great deal of optimism uh, with regards to what happens to agreements struck in the uh, Middle East. Uh, we will focus on the activity on the ground and international law. And I will uh, commence with the story. I was the intelligence officer of the Northern Command. We laid uh, an explosive charge under the car of a very senior official in the Hezbollah near the Nabatia region. And we had to take a decision when uh, to uh, uh, explode that explosive. We followed him with a UAV, and at one point it became apparent that he didn't enter the uh, car on his own. And by every criteria, the two were members of the Hezbollah, but he entered uh, as, along with a boy. We weren't sure if it was his boy or somebody else's, and we had to de de take a decision. And a discussion evolved, and not once uh, was the word international law mentioned. We only asked ourselves if it was moral, if it was moral to kill a senior Hezbollah uh, member uh, that we tried to reach very, for a very long time, and many people la uh, risked their lives in order uh, to reach a situation in which he could be uh, uh, targeted, and perhaps we were missing that one rare opportunity. But on the other hand, there was a child there. We didn't know if it was a boy or a girl, but they were very young, around the age of seven or eight, I believe, at least from what could be seen from the UAV. And we asked ourselves was not the question whether that was uh, applicable to the international law, but rather if it was moral. And the decision that we took was not to uh, push the button, and the man emerged unharmed. Uh, we returned to him later on, and he had to pay the bill. But on that day, there was a very clear decision made and consideration, only moral issues. Because there's a very clear thing here. I'm not that certain that international law is sharp enough when one addresses the minute problems of the way war need to be managed.